Joker fans, what is going on? This is Joker88. You guys might be going, man, dude, you're putting out too much videos. But uh, one of our viewers, Jack White, went ahead and actually posted a link on a recent interview over at one of the stations out there in Shreveport, Louisiana, about Elio. So they went ahead and interviewed Paul Elio. And I'm not going to wait till the next show, like, you know, this coming Sunday, if it's a you know, like a breaking news. So I want to share it with my viewers. So let's go ahead and go to that website. Here it is, guys. Elio Motors CEO Paul Elio speaks exclusively with KTBS 3's Sean Gable. So here it is, guys. It's 11 minutes and 31 seconds. So I'm going to shut up and let you guys check it out. Okay, so um, I've been going through your SEC documents, and the one thing I noticed that you said is that you will not generate revenue until 2017 but you don't start production now until 2018 so how do you plan to generate revenue so um those documents are filed months uh you, you know we file once a quarter that they're they're a little bit behind what's going on right so you're so saying that the, because of the timing the, the production date was pushed back after you filed the documents. I'm not, can you clarify that for me? Should we try that again so it's a, a cleaner answer? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, let's try it again. So the the docu the SEC document was filed in September of 2016. You just announced that you were going to push back production until 2018 for the cars. In your SEC filing, you said that you will start to generate revenue in 2017. So does that still stand? No, so uh, we've moved the date to 2018. Um, funding is taking a little longer than we expected. Uh, bankers tend to not hold their timeline. So as you mentioned, those SEC documents were filed in September, and that was the plan as a, a record as of September, and is now is, has moved slightly. What is the startup financing that you're going to need for Shreveport production to begin? Well, um, we're probably going to do about $200 million in equity plus debt. And your report says that you have generated zero net profit. You have less than 102000 in cash reserves, plus you have the over $123 million in accumulated deficit. And then you state in the SEC filing that these factors, among others, that raise substantial doubt about your ability to continue as an ongoing concern. If you have to curtail business sharply, can you define what that exactly means? So, so you're reading the, the auditor statement. That's not, those aren't my words. Um, and so, yes, as a startup, we have not generated revenue. And what the $123 million deficit means, it, when you raise money, it, your balance sheet has to balance, right? So when you raise money and spend it, um, you create a uh, shareholder's deficit, and then that gets erased through profit. So like uh, Tesla, uh, after years of being in production, they still have a $2.8 billion shareholder's deficit. Right, so they, they, although they are making money, they're profitable, they haven't uh, done it for enough years to eradicate their shareholders' deficit. So as a startup, every startup in the world is gonna have a shareholders' deficit, so there's nothing unusual or scary about that. You, you said that this is an auditor's report, but you signed off on it, so it's, when you sign off on it, that is your seal of approval, am I correct? Yes, but you, you said I said it. I'm, I, I, oh, okay. I'm saying that those aren't my words, but yes, I, I, I agree. And then <laughs> you, I just want to make sure. Attributing and, it to me, and, it wasn't my, they're not my words. Okay, and can you can you tell me what it would take to salvage the company before you have to, as the report says, cease operations altogether? Uh, I think salvage is a bad word. So we're we're in fundraising mode, and so uh, this next fundraise uh, round of funding will set up the final timeline, and then we will start production. Um, you know, I feel comfortable where we're at right now. Uh, I don't know if you ever took the time to go look at the presentation I did to the SEC. Uh, the SEC agreed with me that our capital markets are broken for projects like Elio Motors. And so, you know, uh, it's taking a little um, and, and, you know, there's two ways to look at the delays. Is, is A, it's a delay, or B, these guys just don't quit. Um, you know, when uh, we see an obstacle, we figure out a way over it, around it, under it, through it, but we don't quit and we will get there. Uh, and I feel very comfortable with where we're at on the fundraising process, but it, it just takes longer than uh, I would hope.
two of the ways that you, you the report mentions that you're going to look for fundraising is through the Department of Energy and then CAFE credits. Um, where do you stand on both of those with the filing, the approval? So, so if, yeah, so we have uh, paths to success without uh, either of those programs. Obviously, we, we continue to work on those programs. Um, I think Washington got a lot friendlier in November for illegal motors. Um, given that, you know, we are making the vehicle in Shreveport, Louisiana, with a target of 90% North American content. We've gotten uh, multinational corporations like Hyundai Dymos to agree to invest in the, in the plant in Shreveport because we wanted an American-made seat, so they're going to make our seats for us in our plant so that we have American content. Um, Continental has agreed to manufacture our tires in uh, South Carolina. Uh, so I think the fact that we have for years wanted to make things in America, make them in Shreveport specifically, um, that we may get more traction on, on these things than uh, we had in the past. I think we have a strong story. If you go to the um, uh, DOE's loan program uh, webpage, it gives four criteria on, on what they're looking for, and we exceed on all of them. You know, they want something that uh, can make an impact in our uh, uh, use of foreign oil at a scale that's, that's meaningful, uh, that creates American jobs, and that makes America more competitive. Uh, everything that we're looking for, we do in space. Paul, you have your critics. I know you're aware of that. Um, some even say that your company is a, is a fraud. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I have patience for folks who are skeptical because what we're doing is hard, and and you know everybody ha has a, a different level of skepticism. People that say fraud, it, I have no patience for. I mean, if you look at what we've done, <laughs> you know, we've developed our own engine. For instance, uh, we're the first company since uh, NASA in 1951, the first American startup to show a vehicle with its own engine in since 1951. You know, we have achieved milestone after milestone, and clearly. We are, are going to, to build this vehicle, I believe, but you, you can't deny that this is an honest, sincere attempt to uh, create something very special. Your share price was $175. It's been very volatile. Is that $75? Was that, was that the opening at the IPO? I, I can't seem to find that out. And then... So, no, no. So we, we IPO'd at $12. Uh, I traded up to, about, to $75 for about a minute. Uh, came down to 40 for about three weeks and then stayed between 20 and 25 for about nine months. Um, the fundamental problem, so we're the first <clears throat> and only operating company to do Reg A+. Plus. And um, when you do a Reg A plus deal, you self-underwrite. So if we'd used a bank, um, they would have underwritten the deal. And then post-IPO, uh, their analysts would opine on where the stock should trade. We have, uh, uh, Zax has done it, but that's the only analyst coverage that we have. Which um, is a real problem in that process. I lost you just for a second, but um, I've got to keep going okay. because we're running out of time here. Um, help me help our viewers understand this. You've, you've generated a lot of financing, about $125 million, yet you've only produced five prototypes. To someone who doesn't understand how the car industry works, this sounds like you have burnt through a lot of money to have produced very little. Can you explain this? Sure. It takes a lot of money to start a, a new vehicle company. Uh, Tesla spent over a billion dollars. So did Fisker. The big guy spent over a billion dollars to do a model. We're going to go from first dollar in to uh, uh, first saleable vehicle for around $400 million. So, as car companies go, we are very thrifty. Um, but you're right, $125 million is a lot of money. Uh, I think we've used it wisely, as I just explained, because we, we're going to do it for less than half of what anybody else has ever done it for. But uh, it takes a lot of uh, dollars to start a new car company. The Shreveport facility, you, um, you're leasing that, correct? Yes. The equipment that was inside the facility that you, that it, you show in the filing that you sold it for... Uh, a little bit over four million in net profit. Who were the buyers for that equipment, and did you have a relationship with potential buyers before you were able to lease the building? No. So, so the building. So we leased the building. Elio Motors owns all the equipment inside. So the equipment is Elio Motors. The building is uh, Shreveport Business Parks, and then we lease it back. So we're only going to use about 1.7 million of the four million square feet. 
So it's more efficient to have somebody else own it and lease the space out around us rather than us own the whole thing. Because uh, we have enough going on uh, starting Helio Motors than to, to figure out how to lease the rest of the space. Um, on the equipment sales, uh, they've been sold to a variety of folks. I don't really know the details on it. Uh, we have folks that do that for us. Um, so I, I can't even pull out one name of, of who the equipment was sold to. But again, the, so the, the agreement was that you, you outright bought the equipment that was inside the facility, but you're just leasing the building? Correct. And my understanding was that the, the government officials, when you were here in Shreveport, were disturbed by the sale of that. So the agreement between you and the government, I don't know if it's a, is a, if the agreement is um, private, but so did the city and the government leaders, were they aware of the fact that you were able to sell that equipment? Because it seemed that they were shocked that it was sold. So I, I would disagree with that characterization. I think there was one individual who um, had a problem with that. I didn't notice that uh, an issue with anybody else. Um, and no, that was the deal all along, uh, that, that Elio bought the equipment. We're going to use most of the equipment in place for its intended purpose. Um, it's a, a big part of our success, quite honestly. Um, and so the, the equipment we're getting uh, rid of is stuff that we can't use in our, our business. Last question. We have about five, um, less than two minutes on this. What's your response to buyers suing Elio Motors and wanting their reservation back? And are you aware of the... Um, the petition to file a class action lawsuit. Are you concerned about that? So I, I can't comment on, on anything going on there, but I can say <clears throat> that uh, I think we did a really good job. There, there was a, an article several years ago in the Wall Street Journal that Tesla took refundable reservations and then proceeded to spend that money in their business. And so if they hadn't made it, those people would have lost their money. And it turns out that was legal, but the Wall Street Journal pressed, questioned whether that was right. I didn't feel that was right. So we set it up so there's refundable and non-refundable reservations. So you have to choose a non-refundable reservation. You know, we're not trying to push anybody that way. If you don't like that risk profile, please do a, a refundable reservation. We've been clear about that all along. So the ones who have non-refundable reservations and want their money back, they're out of luck, correct? They, they made a non-refundable reservation, yes. Okay. I appreciate your time, Paul. All right. Well, what do you guys think about that? If you guys have any um, feedback on that, put some uh, comments below. And um, that answers some of your questions. Uh, what other questions do you guys have? And again, this was posted February 7th, uh, 2017. So it's kind of good to see Paul Elio making uh, interviews. So let's just hope that uh, things go well. And I'm not going to take any more of your time today. But uh, we'll talk to you guys on Sunday. Alrighty, guys.